Okay, the recording seems to be started. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the COSI virtual interim meeting. Uh, this is uh, again an ITF meeting, and as such, the note well applies. Please uh, read it carefully if you haven't done so. And if you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask uh, me or any of the other uh, chairs. This is the agenda for today. Uh, we will uh, discuss a little bit about document status and uh, whether there is any need for help. And then have a little bit more discussion, hopefully, on the X509 uh, draft. And then there are a few slides from uh, Goran on various topics. Uh, but yes, he will be presenting, presenting some ideas. And, uh, and I think that will also be interesting. So, uh, yes, is there anything else that you think we should discuss during today's meeting? I just wanted to say, this is Johan, I just want to say that some of the topics in my slides goes into the, doc the current documents in the, uh, in the working group. So it's some, some, some are related to the, to the documents. And, okay. and there's, yeah, so that's basically, it overlaps slightly with some other topic. Okay. Okay, well, uh, I believe we should have plenty of time for uh, discussion, if there are any other topics at the end. But for now, let's get started. So, um, uh, the minutes. Uh, will be taken at the following address. Uh, please take a look at them, especially if you have uh, some comments. Uh, make sure that uh, they are, uh, if there is anything important to be taken from them, they are represented in the minutes, or if there are any action items uh, that they are at the top of the minutes. Uh, in the appropriate section. Uh, otherwise, uh, I will try to take a look at that and uh, I believe uh, Matthew will also be helping me a bit with that. Uh, I will not be monitoring Chopper. Is there anyone that uh, will be monitoring it and in case there is anything to be um, Said from there to act accordingly. There seem to be not many volunteers. So let me ask Marco, could you be taking a look at Jabber? Yes, we'll do. Okay, thank you. So a reminder, the presence in the meetings uh, are recorded. And with that, I think we can go to the next slide. So uh, there are uh, three documents that are fairly advanced already in uh, the RFC editor. Uh, the hash algorithms, the uh, RFC 8152B, which will be RFC 9053. Uh, it's in OAT 48. And uh, uh, for that one, uh, I believe, Pretty much all the questions are 
answered and uh, we the RFC editor is only waiting for a final confirmation uh, for the RFC 9052-2P uh, there are I think one or two things that still need to uh, be answered and then uh, it will also like confirm the suggested text and then it will be ready for publication. And I think it was for the hash algorithms that uh, there was also some uh, ongoing discussion with the RFC editor. Um, so far it seemed that Ben was doing some of that discussion. Uh, I don't think Ben is here at the call right now, uh, but I will reach out to him and uh, make sure if there is any uh, needs for um, help or clarifications from the working group that uh, we uh, we answer any questions. So I will take a look at that. So I think that's the status of those three drafts. Uh, there will be a separate slide with few items for the X509 uh, draft that I think we should discuss. And uh, for the countersign draft, uh, there is the Shepherd write up, which uh, somehow the chairs missed, and uh, now we saw it's there. So I believe we are ready to request. Uh, a publication. Is there anyone aware of any reason uh, to wait for this draft or any everyone agrees? Yeah. Yes, yes, I have a proposal in one of the slides about an addition to the struct draft, as we discussed on the mailing list. But I, I can get back to that okay. in the slides. Okay. Okay, well then, I think we can move to the uh, X509 draft. Uh, so basically for me, there are two major directions of discussion that have been uh, happening. Please correct me if uh, that's uh, not accurate, but we are trying to find good way to provide information for the uh, users, how not to shoot themselves in the foot, while at the same time uh, leaving enough uh, opportunities open when users might have different requirements uh, when using uh, this document. So, uh, there are a few things. Maybe I can also open a pull request from uh, John. I made a few suggestions just earlier today uh, for this uh, pull request, but yes, basically, I think we are uh, mostly aligned what needs to be provided uh, but not exactly sure how to uh, how to phrase that so my understanding is that we want to uh, strongly encourage people to put uh, x5 back x5 chain and x5t in protected header uh, 
while not mandating that absolutely because there might be valid use cases where uh, there is other mechanisms that guarantee uh, the integrity of those uh, header uh, those header parameters uh, and yes are there um, any views yes Karsten yeah thank you um, so th th there is a big danger here of, of uh, dreaming up some specific policy and then trying to to make the mechanism enforce that policy and th that's often a, a mistake that is uh, made there is also this mistake often made that if if a particular policy is is kind of universal uh, maybe you actually do want to make it part of the mechanism but the the problem with the discussions about putting uh, these x5 uh, parameters into uh, the the protected uh, header really was i wasn't even aware aware of the the <laughs> the use cases where you want to do those policies so in in principle you should never need to integrity protect the certificate because the certificate is is by definition integrity protected already um so uh, unless the the presence of that certificate in the uh, communication uh, has has an additional semantics that we didn't make explicit it should never necessary never be necessary to do that you still may want to put them into protected to to possibly gain uh, protection against disclosure but you know when you want to do that. So, so th there is no need to actually make this part of the mechanism. It's, it's enough to point out that, that this is the place you would uh, put them um, if, if the, the uh, environment is, is doing encryption for you and you, you need uh, to, to have uh, confidentiality. Um, but I think that, that we, we have to be really careful about not imparting any any weird additional semantics uh, to these uh, uh, attributes, except that this is information that may be useful for the recipient to have. It, it's not an instruction to change their behavior. It's it's just things that that are uh, in there uh, that that may make the life easier for the recipient. And whenever we actually want to, to change the behavior of the recipient, uh, then we should have attributes that make this very, very, very explicit. Okay. Yes, that makes some sense. Uh, Russ? So, so, Karsten, I encourage you to go read uh, that section of RFC 2634. Um, I think you'll find that uh, uh, what they're concerned about here is two CAs who have authority over the same namespace stepping on each other. That's a different kind of a problem, and I agree with everything you said. Uh, but they're just trying to deal with it with that. And so carrying enough context to know, uh, to deal with that situation, but it's only 2 pages. I suggest you read it. Will do. Thank you. Okay, uh, John. Yeah, I would on a high level say something completely different from Karsten. I think that's a. By default, you should always protect the end certificate unless you, you, you know you are secure not doing that. But uh, now I think uh, there's two possibilities here to make it secure. You put it either you put the bag chain or in protected, or you put the X additional X5T in protected. I think uh, I think the the current remaining discussions are how hard or loose these rec recommendations should be. There was some discussion between Michael Richardson and uh, Lawrence Lundale, I think. And I, 
I think as long as uh, there is a recommendation, I can live with any any normative text here, uh, should or may or uh, yeah, yeah. I think we it seems just how strong the recommendation should be. I can live with anything person. I think we hopefully can clear this out quite soon and close it. Okay. Any other comments on the uh, how uh, strong our encouragement of using the protected headers should be? I saw that uh, Michael just joined, so I guess he's not exactly aware of the discussion so far, but uh, yes, we said so far that as long as there is a recommendation to put the um, headers in protected, like those uh, elements in protected header, uh, people uh, are okay with that. Okay, I would take that as a general agreement with this. Uh, so the next question is uh, the media type and content type. Uh, there is a, an issue on GitHub that had some discussion. Um, and I remember there was some discussion on the mailing list. Uh, what is necessary to uh, bring that to a conclusion? So the discussion was, I believe, between John and Karsten. Uh, any comments on what is necessary to to bring this uh, issue to completion? I, yeah, I seen. I opened this issue. I added something very quick to the uh, to the PR that we just discussed, uh, and then I think I asked for more information, uh, more comments on the on the list. I think Karsten provided some very general feedback on media types, but without any concrete suggestion for this. Um, I think I personally don't have much, uh, any strong opinions, but it would be good if, if whatever we do here align with general uh, guidance and best practice when it comes to media types. Should we reach out to uh, anyone for advice there? So one thing that the, the uh, issue currently seems to imply is that you either have a chain or you have a bag. Um, I don't know whether that's actually always true, whether you can't have a chain plus a bag of, of other stuff. So is the thing either unordered or is it linear? I think it might be a tree. Um, 
and uh, I'm, I'm trying to understand how, how important these these cases are. And um, well, if we don't want to have media types for all the, the 37 um, structures we can imagine here, uh, we could have one media type and just make the, the object itself express whether it's a chain or, or a bag or a tree. Okay. Uh, are there any objections to having only one media type and uh, then have the object express uh, and maybe even the more general question how we how we decide uh, on that I mean, Right now, to me personally, it seems fine to have only one uh, media type, but how how can we decide that? I would be fine with that. How would we signal the internal structure would then that be a keyboard tag perhaps? That would be one way, yes. So what what, what I'm I'm lacking here a little bit is is a, a definitive uh, set of use cases that we are actually trying to cover with this. So wh why why does it never occur that we have a chain where we actually identify two certificates by hash value and the third one is actually sent? Is, is that too contrived a situation or um, so I ca can imagine a, a lot of situations and probably many of them are, are just not useful uh, but I'm, I'm feeling very unsure about saying oh th this is the part that we need to support and uh, we can ignore that other part I don't know if anybody have any good uh, understanding of exactly how this will be used in all cases. So I think we're all fumbling a bit here, but I think one thing is, uh, now it feels like almost you try to go beyond what the cozy headers is doing. They defined either you have a chain or you have a bag. Yep. Uh, uh, and of course, that is um, that is also a valid, might be a valid discussion, but it goes a bit, I think the media type should probably align with the, uh, with the codes of headers, either with different media types or with a single media type and then some internal information like, like a tag. Maybe we don't need to, to do this properly here and, and just wait until we do the same thing for C509 and do it properly there. Um, but uh, at least for C509, I would like to understand what we are doing here. Yes, that, that sounds fine to me. Uh, other opinions? Should we just move this to uh, to the next draft and 
when we have more information for this, the CBOR certificate. Well, we cannot move the, the whole thing to the next draft because then this draft is empty. Uh, so we, I mean, we, we need to uh, do something. <laughs> okay. So what do we need, uh, in your opinion, to be in this draft so that it's enough to be used in the CPR certificate draft? I think the name is C5, C509 could define something different from this. For this, I think we need to decide do we need to do the CX5U need, does it need to support both bag and, and chain or is one of them enough? And if we need to support both, do we have two different media types or a single media type with some internal information? differentiating between bag and chain. Um, everything except that I think is not a, a, a discussion about media type, then, then we're going into should be, is this the right header parameters? But we also could define a media type now and define parameters for it later. So the media type would just be what what's in the CDDL at the end of section two. Yeah, I don't want to add more confusion here. Um, <laughs> it, it's uh, just that uh, it's hard to decide these things when when you don't have a nice set of use cases. Uh, guiding you. Yes. And the thing is that I don't know if there is an easy way to obtain any use cases. I'm not aware of anyone uh, having much of that. Only uh, C509, I guess, is a use case, but At the same time, I don't think we should uh, delay indefinitely the publication of uh, no. this. <laughs> no. So um, I think that the cleanest solution is to have a media type called COSI X509 sets, um, where the, the plural is in the word sets. And uh, then we we just have maybe a slightly more expanded wording um, that explains that in one case the the order of the sets is not used, and in other case the order of the sets is used. Okay, sounds fine with me. So do, do we have an existing PR? I think it's in the same PR as was discussed before about protecting certificate. And there is one PR with a few changes. Uh, let me see the number. Uh, 35. So pull request 35. Okay. So th this looks a little bit like a monster PR. Um, would it be possible to cherry pick the, the stuff that's already agreed from this PR? So we get something more manageable. I think that would make sense. Uh, and probably we should try to either sp 
split it or yes i think there are two or three things happening in the uh, pr some are i think agreed some are a little bit still in discussion but well, we could also accept the whole pr uh, being conscious that th there are still some construction sites in in the result of accepting it i'm just wondering whether there's anything that is destructive in this pr that we would have to undo but it doesn't look like that i don't think there is anything destructive per se no. i think basically everything is more or less agreed but there is disagreement about how strong or loose recommendation should be and then exactly the details of, of this new media type but i think yep. yeah i don't see any destructive in in accepting the whole peer and then making new yeah changing so my suggestion would be to to merge this and then we can go to 37 to issues 37 and generate a small pull request that that solves exactly that Okay. And I will break a vow that I have made to never work on XML IDs <laughs> to generate that pull request. Okay. Thank you, Karsten. Okay, so I will uh, merge that uh, either today or tomorrow. And yeah. Let's start from there. Uh, okay, well, thank you for this discussion. Uh, if there's nothing else, maybe we can go to the slides from Jürgen. Okay. The floor is yours. Sorry, um, here we are. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so th these are four four things, um, uh, which have three of them have been discussed on the mailing list, uh, and the fourth, the last one is is new. And the first one is the only one that's really strict. The other is a little bit more more loose. So. Um, Perhaps we could let's let's focus on the first one, see how long we get on that one, and then the others as as we have time. Next slide, please. So there, there's been a discussion uh, starting off in the Lake Working Group, uh, moving over to the Cozy Working Group with the the mail uh, referenced here um, uh, about defining key ID or extending. Key ID to the key identifier cosy header to be um, be an int, uh, and this is uh, turns out to be useful. It saves uh, bytes needed for for Lake, uh, and and it's kind of a natural way of identifying keys. Um, so we have, a, I mean, there's a general agreement that we, we'd like to be able to identify keys with with Cbor ints. And it started off as a construction with a, a, a separate um, COSI header called key ID 2. And then there was a discussion on the COSI mailing list, and we agreed that it's better to, at least those who participated in, the, in that discussion, agreed that it's better to extend the existing KID to int. And then the question was, should we make this in a separate uh, draft? Uh, or should it be done in Lake? Should it be done in Cozy? Was the first question, and uh, Ben chimed in and said he'd rather see this happen in Cozy because there would be charter changes if we were updating the struct uh, draft in in Lake. And then uh, the question was: If we, is it's a separate, should we do it in a separate draft, or should we do it in the 
struct uh, draft, which is a very late, of course, change. And there was a proposal from Francesca to actually consider doing it in the struct draft, uh, which was agreed by John, I think. So um, we, we, are, we are in auth 48 um, with the struct draft, but we've been in auth 48 for, I think, two and a half months. Uh, so it would would extend the, uh, the, the uh, it would delay that draft, but perhaps not significantly. And the, the, to illustrate the changes, there is a PR uh, number thirty four, and there are four uh, commits, or, or actually no, it's actually four uh, changes in of the kind you can see on this page here, where uh, bit. Byte string is uh, uh, this slash int added to byte string, and that that's essentially it. Everything else seems to work just fine. So that's the proposal to to merge that PR and uh, yeah. What 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 do you think? This is Russ. Um, what happens if one party is using int and another party is using the uh, the beaster? I suppose happens the same thing as for key type or alg. I mean, basically, you could, you you would need to use the same. I mean, in this in this slide here, so you may in certain occasions have different, um, you have different seaboard types, and you identify by the by the seaboard whether it's a, it's a byte string or an int. So you would note. So you'd have to be able to convert between the two. Is my point. No. So that's, what, that's what I'm confused about. Then. Okay, so but, but if you look at key type here, um, no, key type I get. <laughs> okay, and alg as well. Uh, sorry, um, maybe 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 I'm I'm confused. So, if if you identify it with a with a byte string, then then, then the both party needs to identify it with a byte string, basically. But if you have a certificate and it's an octet string there, right? No, this is just the key identifier. Yes, subject key identifier and um, authority key identifier are octet strings, which is why I think this was a bit a beaster was to just copy those values in. Is that not right? Uh, sorry, I'm not following. Maybe someone else is. I I did not know that kid was supposed to identify a subject key identifier in a certificate. I thought the kid was meant to only identify another kid parameter in a CoSI key, but. You might be right. I just always assumed it would support both, and that's why it was a a byte string. So, yeah, just adding to what to what John said, there there is, I mean, basically there are two instances where this is changed: It's the common header parameters and the cosy key, and that's where the kid is appears as as mm -hmm. being referenced. And the other use case I haven't thought about. I certainly don't object to this. I just think that, that that's the, if it has that intent, then we'll have to be able to convert. Right. Would you, I don't know, would you need to convert? Wouldn't, wouldn't it be enough with if kid is intended to identify key identifiers in X509, shouldn't we then just add a sentence on how, whether the key identifier in the certificate is a byte string or an int? Generally, you 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 use a key ID that that is identifying the key. So if if the property of the key is that it's identified by a byte string, 
you use a byte string. And if the, the property of the key is that, that it's identified by an integer, uh, you use an integer. So I think that the potential for confusion is, is very limited unless there are keys that naturally map to both byte string and integer uh, key IDs, in which case you would actually have to say what, what's, what you should use. I think what John said makes sense. If you're if you're if another structure uses an octet string, the byte string is the one that avoids um, exactly conversion because you don't have to worry about sign bits and all of that stuff. Right. So the the integer is meaningful if if the context from which you interpret the key ID um, actually counts or, or enumerates keys. Or it's an index into a table or all those yes. things, right? Yes, right. That's what I meant. No, sure. That that I get why people want to do this, and I'm not opposing. Yeah. I just want to make sure we're not going to. Yeah, I just something. think the potential for confusion is, is limited unless we have the the weird situation that uh, um, the, you can use both a byte string and an integer to to ide identify keys. And uh, th there may be confusion which one you actually mean. Okay, I, you convinced me that there's not an issue here. Do we need any additional text or are we happy with just this reasoning? I'm satisfied. Okay, thanks. Any other comments? Yeah, process wise, since the document is in. Um, Auth 48. Ben is not here, but I would expect that there will need to be some sort of last call or call for community feedback. I mean, there has been discussion in the working group, but maybe Russ or people with more experience can can say something about that. What will happen is the RFC editor will ask the sponsoring AD to sign off on the chain. If it's small enough that you're comfortable doing that without redoing the last call, do it. If you think it's big enough that a new last call is needed, then do it. Yeah. So Ben will have uh, um, will have to decide on this. Yeah, I think it's entirely up to his discretion how how we he wants to handle that change. Okay. Thanks very much for for the comments. And um, just uh, maybe one supporting? yeah question. Uh, have you considered uh, what would be the implementation cost of having this? Uh, is it something that was that, part? Yeah, yeah, great, great question. That that was actually part of the of the mail thread. Uh, Lawrence Landblade had one comment about this and. Uh, he was asking if this really worthwhile, uh, and and then um, in the end, I think he was convinced by the arguments. So, it has been brought up on the mail mailing list. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Then then I'm really happy with the feedback here. Uh, I suppose um, we take this to Ben. Then we'll. Will you do that, Devilo, or should I do something? Um, if you want, you can send a message to Ben and put me in copy. Like maybe how the chairs could be in copy, and uh, I think that's a good option. If you have some concerns with that, let me know, and uh, I can also help. Okay. So I'll 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 ask Ben then how we proceed with this. Thank you. Then please move on to the next slide. Um, this slide is here just because it appeared on the um, on the draft agenda, uh, but it's not on the it was, it was taken out from the draft agenda. So I, I don't know if I need to say much. But just just for the status update on on this draft, um, this the base specification is stable. We, there has not been any updates since ITF 111, and there were has been quite a few updates before that. Um, 
And in terms of supported extensions, there is now the CSRs, CRLs, and there is Rust code uh, for people to try out. And we um, didn't plan to make an update now. We are somehow waiting for feedback. Uh, we think this would be a good time to, to make reviews or, uh, or any other input or comments on, on, the, on the current state of the draft. So that was all I planned to say here. I don't know if there anyone has a, any comment now. Otherwise, we move on. So what, what's your timeline? Um, I suppose that the, it, as we, we didn't plan to make an update for, for the next meeting. So we're basically looking for comments until, um, until the meeting. Okay. Basically that that's when we'd like to have, oh, well, pr preferably like uh, a week or two before, for the meeting. So the, the next step will be the working plus core. Uh... I don't know. I mean, there are more. There are more things that uh, you can add here. We have just started with C CSR, CRLs. There is OSCP. Yeah. Uh, is that something we should add as well? So I think we need to have a little bit more discussion about the the total content of the draft. But there is, and that that there's more work to do. Uh, um, but for now, there is quite a few things that we haven't got reviewed. So I think it still merits a review at this point. So is there a charter issue with doing CSR, CRLs, and, and OCSP? No, I don't think so. I think that revocation is explicitly mentioned in the in the charter. And is there an issue with doing it in a separate document? No, I don't think so. I, that John, what do you think? I think there was some, you had some views there on what, where this. Uh, it's better I, done. Yeah, I think the, the lack of progress is not only due to lack of reviews. I have, I have personally simply not have time to prioritize this. I will have more time to do that uh, in a few in a few months. I think my initial idea was to only specify the certificate, and then maybe uh, the CSR. Then we got a comment that. Um, uh, we should add the CRLs and OCSP from URI. Uh, and uh, at the beginning, I felt like maybe a different draft is better for that. But now when I started adding them, the you can reuse very, very much from the original things. So adding them to this, everything to the same draft would not be so much extra work work and might be worth it, but I, I guess it depends on on how soon we will have want to have the base specification out. When you not not only have to add text to the draft, you also have to implement it and and get it reviewed and uh, throw some real world CLs at it and and see what happens and so on. So it, it's not entirely trivial, and I I, I think that. Uh, doing it in a separate document is fine, even if we publish that six months later. Yeah, yeah. If, if I see no problem of, then I think revocation should be done in a different document, and maybe CSRs should be kept in in the current document. Sounds good to me. Okay. Thanks, Karsten. Um, and more more comments are welcome. But I, in the interest of time, I propose we move move on to the next slide. Um, so here is the thing that we have been working on in 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 Lake, and um, we think that this really belongs to COSI. The question is, uh, um, yeah, to what extent this should be a separate draft? So so this is this is. Um, the use of CWTs and CWT claim sets uh, in uh, as authentication credentials or as, as credentials containing public keys. So in Lake, we have defined two uh, COSI header maps and the uh, oh sorry COSI headers uh, for for. CWT containing a COSI key in a CNF claim and for 
uh, a CWT claim set containing a cozy key. And the, the question for cozy is, do we need to specify some more general use of CWT as authentication credential? Uh, and that would be the analog of the draft ITF cozy X509, but using Seaboard web tokens uh, containing uh, cozy keys instead of X509. So it's kind of an open question and I'm happy to get some, some quick comments on that. If anyone has any opinion. I don't hear any opinion here. Um, okay, so I've raised the topic. So and... how, how do you verify a SIBO web token? Are you supposed to know everything we need for that? If not, then we probably want to be able to recurse in some form. Yeah. I mean, exactly. I mean, this is so. So the thing we we would like to do with Cyber Web tokens is um, to identify them, like like X5T and X5U, uh, or, or to be able to retrieve them, or or to handle uh, things like chains. Um, so okay. exactly, yeah. So that that's. I mean, that's basically the question. How how do we do? We need to specify those uh, headers and all the considerations around how you use them. Can this be a separate draft? Uh, yes, this, this should definitely be a separate draft, I think. And, and I'm just gauging interest here and if people think this is needed and, and so on. Because there, I mean, CWTs has appeared both in TLS and in Lake, and it's yeah. likely that people will, will, will start using them in a similar way as, as so other credentials. How, how's the chain done in TLS? So the, um, I mean, basically, what what X five hundred nine the cozy X five hundred nine draft is only specifying how you um, how you identify the chains. I uh, I don't know if the TLS maybe Sean remembers that, but I, TLS has its own chain structure. So if you have a certificate format, which now is CWT according to Hannes draft, then you automatically get the chain in in okay yeah. yep okay any any views of this spontaneous support for this or this not needed or what do people think I think we won't be able to escape it. Okay. Necessary, but no enthusiasm. <laughs> okay, it's okay. Uh, let's, let's start there. Um, I, thank you. Thank you. I think it's good enough for now. And let's move on to the last slides before the meeting is over, if that's okay. Unless you want to cut a value for something else. There's two slides to go. Uh, no, I think if unless someone else has other topics to discuss, uh, the next ITF meeting is soon enough, so I don't have anything else. Okay, good. Then then I'll take take the time to look at this. So this is basically a question for X five hundred nine, which I um, uh, I I think it's fine what's in there, but I I'm a little bit interested in 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 another uh, an extension. So um, COSI X509 distinguished between uh, COSI headers for sender and recipient in the case of Diffie-Hellman. So it's, it's basically in section two is basically structured on what kind of COSI object do you put this header in? When you put it in, in, in a COSI sign, then you will, uh, yeah, this would be the, 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 the sender's uh, 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 certificate uh, containing its public key, which its digital signature public key, uh, or 
if you use, put it in the cozy recipient object, it will be used to uh, identify the certificate for the recipient of the message. But in section three, it's added, as you know, these sender uh, tags. So the headers uh, are used to specify, identify the, the senders uh, of uh, senders key. And it, it's pointed out specifically for static static key agreement algorithms. So from, from my point of view, I mean, this, it certainly makes sense that if you have, if you're doing Diffie-Hellman, you have two key pairs and you might need to identify both the, uh, the sender's public key and the recipient's public key. So, so, so far, so good. But I, what wasn't clear to me is why is this limited to static static? Uh, please look at the next slide. So if we compare the, um, the table one at the top right, um, which is basically just the cozy headers for, uh, as we are used to with, with the, this corresponding sender um, headers, this uh, specifically points out the algorithms used with static static. And in my view, you could, should be able to use something similar for ephemeral static. So let's say that you're saying you're sending an ephemeral key and you want to point out, so, so, so basically you have the sender's ephemeral key, and you want to point out uh, specifically what static key of the recipient you are using, then you would, would use two different type of, of headers, uh, say you're identifying with the, with the hash and thumbprint. So it wasn't really clear to me. Maybe, maybe someone, maybe this is obvious or just wanted to check. Any quick comments on that? What, do people understand why, why we restrict it to static static? I think the short answer is you never put an ephemeral inside a certificate and that's what it's talking about. Right. So the ephemeral would always be separate. Correct, it's never certified. Mm. So it's the only, the only case where this is really needed is when you do static static and then, okay. Yeah, that's a good, that's a really good. Sorry for spending time here uh, <laughs> explaining to me. Um, I, to, okay, to John. me the question would be some completely different. Why do we need to separate parameter for X file five while there is only one parameter for kid? If this is needed for X5, why is it not needed for kid, kid uh, recipient, kid sender? Um, it feels like this is handled differently. My my understanding, which might be completely wrong, was that it uh, these parameters identify the sender, except it, if it's put in the recipient uh, part of the message. So if you're trying, if you're um, trying to uh, form the key, the shared secret, you need um, in in the static static case, they might both be certified, right? And and in the static ephemeral case, only one of them is certified. Usually, you just send the ephemeral itself um, in one direction or the other. And in this case, I think um, the sender is providing the ephemeral and he's telling the recipient uh, which of his certified uh, publics he is using. Yeah, but you could do, you could do static static with only kid header parameters. I, I don't understand if you can do static static with kid header parameters, why could you not do static static with two uh, X5 T parameters or phrase differently. If you cannot do it with two X5 T without this X5 T sender, why can you do it with the kid? Completely forgetting ephemeral 
he's only talking about static static you just need a way to clearly identify which keys are involved So if you have two kids, it could be that could that be, you fine. Got, as, that long, could be fine. as long as they are um, adequate to identify the you know in the universe of all uh, cozy keys, right? So why wouldn't X five two X five T's do the same job? I think they would. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I, I think this is actually complicating things. So if we if we could, yeah, I don't I don't know this I don't know if this is something we should consider change now. But anyway, um, if it's not really strictly needed, with I think the the reason you're getting confused is Table Two is talking about static ECDA, and so that's what it's talking about, and you're you're trying to say, okay, now, how do I bring in some other uh, way of doing this? Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really happy with this feedback. Thank you very much. Um, I don't have any proposed action here unless someone else has some idea of proposed change or if we should just go ahead. Probably easiest to don't not change anything at this stage. Uh, so unless there are further comments, with that I'm I'm done with my slides. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you for these uh, discussions. With that. We are over time, so if there is anything else, please bring it to the mailing list. Uh, thanks and have a nice day. Bye. Thank you.